Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at. It's Will, the Bowtie Sober Guy, coming at you with another weekly lesson. And uh, if you've been following me, you know that I'm on a series, and on this series is four weeks, and then I'll rotate through those four weeks. Last week we were on week two, and we were talking about health and wellness and our physical well-being. And now this week, we're gonna actually be talking about some life strategies. I'm excited to share that with you. And I picked something that I think is really, you're gonna find really interesting. And it's about decision-making. And decision-making is what we're gonna talk about and how we make decisions. So I'll be sharing some different things with you this week as we talk about that as kind of our life strategies for the week. So really excited about that. And with that, we're gonna dive in. Again, it's Will, the Bowtie Sober Guy. And I'm excited, but first I want to tell you guys, I'm actually in Colorado. I'm sitting outside at a friend's house and I'm literally looking at the mountains. I'm staring west and the mountains are out there and it's absolutely beautiful. As some of you know, I relocated late last year to the Phoenix area. So I came back uh, to visit my, my family back here uh, this last week. And uh, so I'm coming at you uh, from here and really excited about that. It's absolutely beautiful. But let's dive in to decision making. You know, decision making is one of those interesting things, and I have always thought of myself as a as a, a good decision maker. Interesting thing about making decisions is I've always been very quick to make decisions, and I don't, sometimes that's been good. Sometimes that hasn't been good. And so, what I've learned through my own lessons and life and all of that thing is that I have to slow down a little bit when it comes to making decisions. I still a pretty um, fast decision maker. I try to take in all the information in a very quick manner and try to make that decision. Now, one thing that I've learned, as many of you know, I'm, I'm in recovery. And one of the things I've learned in recovery is that I have to be careful about those initial rash decisions. I think there's a big difference there between making a decision that is based on data and information compared to a rash decision that's really made on emotion and feelings and all of that. So we're going to talk about that uh, this week. So one, I'm going to give you guys a tool that I'm really excited about sharing with you that I came across a number of years ago, but I think that it's um, really important when we look at our decisions and we look at our long-term goals and what we're trying to accomplish in life. And some of you may have heard it before, and we're going to go through it this week, and it's called the Eisenhower Decision Matrix. Again, it's the Eisenhower Decision Matrix. And it's a very simple matrix, and it's got four squares. Um, and uh, I'll make sure that I have a PDF or something like that available for you guys to download and kind of look at, because I think it's really important when it comes to making our decisions on a daily basis that actually will get us to our long-term goals. And that's what the Eisenhower Decision Matrix is all about. And what we're gonna do is it's really gonna help us become more effective and not necessarily just more productive, but really more effective, not just more productive. And I think there's an important distinction there. You know, I can be really productive, but not be very effective, not really see results. The best example that I have of that, that I, that I can think of, uh, is really interesting. So I have, as I've shared, um, ran a number of marathons in my life many, many years ago, training for one now. But what I did a number of years ago, I ran two complete marathons, 26.2 miles, ran two of them on a treadmill. They were both fundraisers. They were both for me to raise money for different organizations, but I ran 26.2 miles outside of a big box store once, and then also at a professional basketball game, um, just on one of the concourses. 26.2 miles on a treadmill. So it's interesting when you think about being effective in reaching your goals or being productive. I ran 26.2 miles on a treadmill. Okay, how far did I go? Well, I went 26.2 miles, but did I get anywhere? I was literally on the same track the entire time. So think about that mouse that is in the, the little turnstile thing that it goes round and round and round and round. Doesn't get anywhere, but boy, they work really, really hard. And that's what the Eisenhower decision matrix can actually help us with when it comes to decision making. And so instead of just taking action and being busy, we're actually going to be effective. And I think there's a big, big difference there. Again, I ran 26.2 miles, but I didn't get anywhere, 
right? Yeah, I finished and I did that and I can count it as a marathon, but I didn't get anywhere when it came to actually going out and, and getting anywhere further down the road or anything like that because I was in one place. Very interesting when you think about that. So the matrix is really, really simple. And again, I'll have a link um, for you guys available in the, down, in the, the comments or the uh, description for you to download. So it breaks it down into two different categories and they're urgent, urgency and importance. Okay, so there's urgency and importance. And again, it's a very simple matrix. You've got four squares. Okay, so I want you to visualize this as you're listening to this or watching it. And there's four, four distinct places that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the very top and it's going to be urgent and non-urgent. Okay, so there's two different ways that we have to look at our decisions. What is urgent and what is not urgent? And then from an important standpoint, on the left-hand side of the column or the, the matrix is going to be important and of course, not important. And so you've got these four squares that, that all fit into those two different columns and two different rows. You've got your urgent and important. Okay, so that's square one, urgent and important. Square two is not urgent, but is important. We're gonna talk more about each of these here in a minute. And then you've got square three, which is not important, but is urgent. Something that has to get done. And then, of course, the last box in the quadrant is going to be not important and certainly not urgent. Again, I encourage you to think about these things when it comes to your decision. We're going to look at each square individually here, and I'm going to share some information. So urgent and important tasks, that top left or box okay, in the matrix, the top left one is urgent and important. Those things that we have to get done, we have to get them done now for us to be able to reach the goals that we want to reach, okay? Those need to be completed immediately. Then the box right next to that in the matrix is going to be the important. They're important to reach our goals, but they're not necessarily urgent, okay? Those are things, think about this, that we need to schedule. We need to put them on our calendar. We need to find time for them because again, they're important, but not necessarily urgent where we have to take care of them right now. And one thing I forgot to say on the urgent and important is kind of the do it box of the quadrant, right? These are the things that we have to get done right now because they're urgent and important. The second box in the upper right hand corner is going to be not urgent, but certainly important. And they're important for us to be able to reach our goals. Then we've got our third box in the bottom left. Again, these are going to be urgent tasks, but they're not as important. We're going to look at each one of these individually also real quick here in a second. And so those, what we want to do is we want to delegate those. Again, they're not important. We don't have to necessarily be a part of that, but they certainly are urgent and they're going to require some attention, but not necessarily by you. And those are the things that we're going to delegate. And then the fourth box, and this is one of the hardest ones for me. It truly is one of the hardest things for me to do. It's the not important and certainly not urgent. And unfortunately, there's a lot of things that I can get trapped in that fall into that quadrant. And I think I'm productive by falling into that, but they are not urgent. They're not important. They don't help me to reach those goals that I want to reach. So you're now asking, well, Will, wait a minute. What goes in those quadrants? Like, I get that. I get that it's a do it, it's a schedule it, it's a delegate it, and then finally it's a delete it. Like, just take it out of your life. Take it out of your daily routine. I get that. But what, like, give me some examples of all of those, and I'm glad that you asked, because that's what we're going to go through here. So, again, quadrant number one, upper left-hand corner, is the quadrant of do it. So those are the things that are urgent and important. So what are those things that fall into that? Well, they're things with clear deadlines and consequences for not taking immediate action. Again, clear deadlines and consequences for not taking immediate action. Some examples of that. Maybe you have a project that's due. Maybe you have a project that's due for, for work or in your profession or anything like that. Those are things that you need to get done. Maybe it's submitting an article. Maybe you're submitting an RFP. Uh, in my case, there might be, I might be trying to get a speaking engagement and I have to submit my information to the organization that's looking to hire speakers. 
Um, responding to some emails, not all emails definitely fall into this quadrant at all, but there are some that do. And the way I look at that, if it's typically anything to do that's client related, it may fall in, not all, but it may fall into that category. Um, and it may not because it might not be urgent. It might be important, but it might not be urgent. And so that is one. So responding to some emails is absolutely going to be critical to, your bu critical to your business. Usually anything with sales or marketing or client support or anything like that, a lot of those will fall into there. How about personally, if you get that call from the school and your child is sick? Well, absolutely. Those definitely will fall into that category. Again, those are the, I have to do it and I have to do it now because there's clear consequences, clear deadlines, and something that is important for me to be able to fulfill what I am choosing to fulfill in my life, whether that's professionally or personally. So that is our first quadrant, quadrant number one in the upper left-hand corner of the do it. Those are the urgent and important. So now let's look at the quadrant number two, which is our not urgent, but certainly important quadrant, okay? These are the things that I had mentioned where you're going to schedule it. You're actually gonna put it on your calendar and you're gonna put time aside for that specific event. So those are activities that may have may not have a set dot deadline, but they do bring you closer to your goal. So they're gonna be things that you have to do, but you don't have a specific deadline tied to it, but you know that's going to move you towards your goal. I, I had one of those things on my calendar today that I had actually scheduled. Um, I launched my podcast today, so I had that scheduled. And um, I was able to get it done and put it in there, but I put it on my calendar. I knew that it was going to get done. I knew that it was important. It wasn't urgent, but I had it scheduled. And I had worked up to this day as far as getting it on there. Um, professional development. Maybe it's a you're going to a workshop. You're going to a seminar. Uh, maybe you're watching one of my videos um, that you know is going to help you, but you actually have scheduled that, so you're giving yourself time for that. Networking is another area that you can put on your calendar. You know that it is, it's not urgent, but it's certainly important to help you in your business, in your profession, and in your life. Um, and then one of the things on a personal level that you can look at when it comes to that is exercise. And that's something that I wish I was better at. Um, I'm getting there. I used to be really, really good at it, um, but I'm trying to get better at it. And again, training for this marathon is, is one of those things that I am making sure that I get the, the training in that I need to, but it isn't quite where I would like it to be. So I need to do a better job of actually scheduling that because it is super important to me and there is some urgency to it, but I need to do a better job of putting it on my calendar. So maybe exercise is one of those things for you. So now we're gonna look at quadrant number three. Quadrant number three, we're going to delegate it, is what I said, and this one can get tough too. So these are going to be the urgent tasks, but they certainly aren't. don't have that same level of importance. Again, they're urgent, but not as important as other things. They're things that need to be done, but they may not require that, that specific skill that you have, and a lot of busy work really falls into this, that busy work that we just kind of get tied into. It's something that I can get caught up in. Um, you know, maybe it's creating a new flyer or doing something for my business like that, that it's really more busy. It's, it's important. It's not super important, but it is fairly urgent because maybe I have an event coming up or anything like that. And so I really need to, to make sure that I look at that. And is there ways that I can delegate that? One of the things that I do is I have some partners in my organization that I work with that help me with parts of my business that I delegate certain parts of my business to so that I, because they're not necessarily in my wheelhouse, I don't have the time, they don't take my skill set, but it takes someone else's skill set. So I've delegated that to them. So what are those things for you that you have in your life that are urgent, you have to get them done, but they're more like busy work and they're not as important when it comes to reaching your goals. So that is our third quadrant. And then our final quadrant, the fourth quadrant, which is the delete it quadrant. Again, as I mentioned, can be difficult for me at times, but these are really those distractions that take you away from doing the things that you know are going to move the needle in your business, in your profession, in your life, whatever that is that you're working on. And those are those things that just are those true distra distractions that when you do them, 
when you're in the moment, you might feel okay about it. But then when you're done, you're like, oh, that was a complete waste of time. And I should not have spent that time on that. And, and I've, I get caught in that trap too. Um, I'll get, you know, sucked into some um, spiral of watching something or doing something. And all of a sudden I realize, oh, wow, I spent an hour on that when I didn't really have an hour and it really had no importance and there was no urgency at all in it. Now, one thing I'll tell you about this quadrant before I give you some examples is these items you can certainly still do, but I would find time outside of normal hours or hours where you're not as productive to actually throw those things in there. Um, and these things, because they're good in moderation, we just can't get caught up in spending all of our time there because it's truly spinning our wheels and we're not getting anywhere. We're not moving that needle towards reaching our goals. Some of those things, unfortunately, and I'm on here right now, is social media. Now, social media is great. It's awesome. And we can use it in so many different ways. You know, again, I moved away from my two boys. And so I use social media to stay in touch with them, um, along with some other friends and things like that here in Colorado. But um, I just can't get caught up in it and I use it in moderation. Uh, TV, and now it's YouTube, right? We can get um, sucked into YouTube and watching YouTube over and over and over and learning about this and that and this. And Again, these are all, these aren't bad things. Don't, don't get me wrong, they're not bad things but we have to use them in moderation. Um, and we try to get as much rid of that that's not empowering ourselves and our lives towards reaching those goals that are keeping us from them. And, and again, we use it in moderation. And then from a health and wellness or a personal standpoint, you know, maybe it's eating junk food, um, eating you know, fast food uh, too often. Again, I, I treat myself occasionally to some fast food or that kind of thing but it, it all is in moderation and that's what we have to look at. So this is that quadrant where we want to really want to look at those things in our lives and it's okay to have them in our lives, but how much time, how much energy do we put forth in them? So that is the Eisenhower matrix. You can look it up. You can learn all about it. Again, I'm going to make sure that um, there is a way for you to get a copy of this matrix from me. There'll be a PDF link um, in the descriptions wherever you come across this. But again, think about the four different quadrants. The Eisenhower decision matrix, there's four quadrants. Upper left-hand quadrant are those things that are urgent and important. And that's really where the rubber hits the road and we wanna spend a good majority of our time and energy on those things in that quadrant. The second best quadrant are those things that are not necessarily urgent, but are certainly important. And we wanna spend time there on those as well. The third, area is where we want to look at can we delegate some of these activities to someone else to ai i mean there's different things there's all kinds of things out there coming out with ai on how do we deal with these types of things that maybe are time wasters and they're certainly urgent but they're not as important okay and they don't really help us and then of course the fourth quadrant is we delete it at least try to minimize it because those are the things that are true distractions and keep us from reaching what it is that we want to reach and so i want you guys to think about this as you go through this week how can you use the Eisenhower decision matrix in your life on a regular basis. We make all kinds of decisions all day, every day. And it's pretty amazing when we think about it, um, how many of them we might put on auto, autopilot and we don't really think about it. So I encourage you to think about all those things as you go through this week and find out what are the things that I can do that are gonna fit in the, those main quadrants that are actually gonna move me towards my goal. And I'd love to hear how it works for you, please. Um, comment in the in the comments below. Let me know what you think of it, how it's going, if you have any suggestions, any ideas like that. But I'd love to hear from you. And I thank you for tuning in today um, and this week. And we're going to be talking about some different things next week. But I'm excited to have you here this week, where we're going to where we're looking at these things that are truly life strategies. And these are things that I want to give to you for you to be able to help grow in your life in your business, in your career, in your relationships, in your finances, all of those things. So think about these things and how do you relate them to all those different areas of your life. In the end, please reach out. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything like that, please reach out. I'd love to talk to you. Um, you can learn more about me by going to bowtieliving.com. Um, learn more about what I'm doing, how I'm working with other people, and what I'm doing to help them turn their dreams into realities. 
With that, I'm going to sign off. I love you guys. It's Will, the Bowtie Sober Guy. Peace out.